Uh, welcome. My name is uh, Sam. Sam Seiden. Okay. Uh, I know uh, there's a, a bunch of familiar faces in here, but uh, also a bunch of uh, new people today. Okay. I thought uh, we I thought we go at this a, a little bit different today. Okay. Um, there are some new faces in here, so uh, we'll keep seeing we'll keep things uh, simple as we always do. And uh, I don't know if everyone's seeing that little box that keeps popping up, but I think I just got rid of it. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, everything should be fine now. Let's move on. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself and in uh, my past uh, in in a, just a few minutes. Um, I think it's important for for your understanding, but uh, we'll do it in a few minutes because uh, it'll be it'll, it'll help you out if we wait a few minutes. Uh, let me just start out by asking everyone in here a series of questions. Um, if you've kind of heard this stuff before, like I know some of you have, go ahead and answer the questions. If you've if you've never uh, it's your first time with us, um, just kind of follow along. I'll try to answer the questions if you can. Okay. This uh, this this level. Uh, I have circled here at the top, uh, basically around the 26th of May, right around the uh, 158 to maybe 157.50 euro level up there, that circled area. Why did prices drop from that level? Why did why did prices were up there for for a little bit, uh, about four or five candles? Why did they fall? All right, everybody see that? Okay, more willing sellers than buyers. Is there, any, is there anything else that could cause the drop in price? Exactly, Harley. The combination of no more buyers and too many sellers. Now, don't, don't bring oil into it. Keep, keep it to the currencies right now. Okay. Um, be careful with that wording, though, Tippy. Supply and demand balance. It's actually uh, a supply and demand imbalance. It's out of balance. Okay. Prices fall from that circled area because you have more sellers than buyers. Okay. Any question on that? Anyone not understand that 100%? It only took us about 30 seconds to uh, do that. Okay. Prices could not stay there because there were too many sellers, not enough buyers. Anytime that happens in any market on the planet, price has to fall. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I've moved the circle over to the right. Okay. <clears throat> Who uh, who's buying up here? Obviously, we have a buyer and a seller. But what do we know about the buyers? They're making two big mistakes. What mistakes are they buying? What, what mistakes are they making when they buy? How do we know they're amateurs? How do we know they're beginners? Maybe they're professionals. Maybe they're be the best traders on the planet. On the planet. All right, mistake number one, they're buying into resistance, right? In other words, they're buying into a price level where we've already determined there's more sellers than buyers. What's the second mistake they're making? They're buying after, good job, they're buying after a period of price increase. They're buy, buying after a period of buying. Okay, So they're buying after a period of buying, buying into a price level where the chart tells us that there are more willing sellers than buyers. Okay. According to the laws of supply and demand, what are the chances that when someone buys after a period of buying and at a price level where you have more sellers than buyers, what, what are the chances that, that that buyer is going to be successful? How often do you think that buyer is going to be successful? Yeah, you're probably right there. Uh, I don't know exact percentages, but but very uh, very few times they'll be right once in a while, uh, but usually they're going to lose. Okay. All right. Exactly. And uh, if we were all going to take a minute and develop the worst possible trading strategy, what would our buy signal be? It would probably be, if we want to develop a strategy where we're almost guaranteeing a loss almost every trade, uh, what would our buy signal be? It would probably, probably be to buy after a move up in price and right into a price level where supply exceeds demand, right? Can anybody think of a worse entry? Okay. 
So if we have identified the worst possible uh, time to buy, have we not also identified the best possible time to sell? Does everybody see that? Okay. Uh, these currency markets, like any other market, they, none of them are any different. It's the people that understand and know what they're doing getting paid from the people that don't. Okay. C uh, coming from my background, which is from the floor of the Chicago Retail Exchange, uh, you see that every day. It's simply a transfer of accounts from the people that don't know into the accounts of the people that know. Okay. It sounds crazy to say we're going to buy after a move up in price and into a price level where supply exceeds demand. Yet, you see it every day. The majority of people do it. Right? Thank God they do it. Okay? Because that gives us our very low risk, high reward trading opportunities. Okay? Any questions on that? We'll talk about profits uh, shortly. All right. Let's let's walk through one more here, and uh, I promise you we will definitely talk about uh, we'll definitely talk about the profits. Okay. Let's do uh, let's run through another one here. Okay. All right. Uh, now at the bottom here, okay, and we'll go to the uh, we'll go to the we'll do, we'll do some uh, some forecasting here soon. But let's look at the bottom. Uh, early May, right, right around May 10th or so, that circled area. Why did prices rally from there? Okay, why why was there a rally from there? Don't worry, if you're a short-term trader, uh, we're going to look at tiny time frames too. There, everything we're talking about here is applicable in any time frame, okay, and uh, in any market, All right? Prices rally from that level. They can't stay at that level because uh, demand greatly exceeds supply. In fact, the imbalance is so strong that you only get a pivot there. There's no, there's no basing, okay? You don't have a number of candles like you did on top. It, it, it price can't stay there. It's not physically possible. The number of buyers greatly exceeds the number of sellers. In fact, you run out of sellers. That's why prices rally. Okay. Uh, to the right, when prices come back down to that level, okay. When prices come back down to that level, again, uh, we have a buyer and a seller. But when we focus on the sellers there, what two mistakes are they making? Okay. Again, it's the same thing. They're selling after a drop in price and right into a price level where demand exceeds supply. Okay. No, you don't always look at a daily chart, this question there. Any time frame, doesn't matter at all. We'll go to the smaller time frame shortly. Okay. One of the reasons why we're starting with a bigger time frame, and this might be a, a little bit big, um, you know, I'll, I'll do a combination of active trading and uh, more swing trading. Uh, I manage accounts. And uh, and for that, I'm doing mainly swing trading, okay. And I'll go off these bigger time frames. Um, I also write uh, some of the letters, a uh, letter for Online Trading Academy, and uh, just a uh, not all that long ago, uh, a few weeks ago, actually it wasn't even that long ago. Uh, that 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 high up there at uh, right around 57.50. Uh, I, I put that out in the letter suggesting that the, the euro was probably going to drop and you should probably be buying the dollar uh, against it. And it was just for that reason right there. I, I've been getting emails on it, so I thought I'd throw that out there. Okay. But again, this is all about identifying the, uh, the very novice trader. Okay. Because uh, the way these markets work and the way these, you know, these candles are created, okay, Right? It, it's simply people entering the market that are trading based on emotion and the wrong set of rules. Okay. Uh, providing income for the traders that trade based on logic and a very solid set of rules that are based on the objective laws of supply and demand. Okay. All right. We'll we'll bring it down uh, some time frames. Okay. 
you want to under uh, we'll, we'll talk about these candles in a little more detail as we go to the smaller time frames. Uh, while you could just enter into these levels as we're talking about them, okay, um, probably a better idea is to go to the smaller time frames when you enter into levels like this. And we'll go to different markets and time frames, okay. Let me uh, let me get a uh, different market up here for you. Okay. And some smaller time frames. Um, I don't think this is the market we were looking at. So one second. I think it was the uh, here's the pound. Yeah, let's let's take a look at the pound. Uh, when we take a look at the pound, okay. Hang on one second, let me get this up for you. Okay. Here is the uh, British pound against the dollar. It's a daily chart. We could bring it down to a smaller time frame. Okay, here we go. Here's just a little five minute chart of the pound. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just let me just get to this question here because it's so important. It's kind of the basis of what we're gonna. I was just I was kind of gonna lead into what you're asking there. All right. Everybody see this question here? There's plenty of candle patterns, different names, just shooting stars, and engulfing. Uh, how do you interpret them and and, and define them and, and all that? Uh, Okay. This is uh, very very important that you understand. Okay. Uh, un understand something here. Okay. Let's uh, let's blow this chart up a little bit. All right. Yeah. Let's find some of these patterns. Okay. You have to understand first of all. Uh, with, with with any, uh, this is very important. I was actually going to lead into this, but we can just jump into it right now. All right. With all the candlestick patterns, the engulfing bars, the the uh, haramis, the uh, dark cloud covers, the shooting stars, the doji candles. Okay, all those things um, you have to be very very careful. Um, instead of just taking them as the book tells you to use them, you know, uh, looking at them the way the book says to look at them. Um, you know, good luck with that. Okay, if it was that easy, everybody'd be making money, right? The problem is, um, let's find. Let me find one here for you, a real obvious one, and then we'll talk about it. Um, I'll find one here for you. Okay, let's go to uh, all right. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at this chart and find some candle patterns on here. Try maybe the smaller time frames will. Okay, uh, give us something here. Here we go. Okay, excellent. All right. So everybody see this uh, this, this five minute chart of the pound? Can everybody see that? Okay. I'm using this new video feature, so I, I wasn't sure if I need to uh, keep updating. Okay, good. I don't. All right, great. Great. So. Um, let's take a look here. 
And as everybody see, I'll just circle it. Well, you guys can obviously see what I'm doing here. Um, okay. Uh, these two candles right here. See, we have a little engulfing pattern right there. All right? Would everybody agree with that? In other words, you have a green candle. It's not really engulfing. It's kind of an inside bar, I should say. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, there we have a green candle followed by a, a red candle that's inside the green candle. That's a bearish pattern in every candlestick book. Okay. And if uh, if I was writing a book on Japanese candlesticks and all the patterns, uh, I would probably use this as an example. Right. You've got the, the green candle up, uh, the red candle in the middle, uh, the red candle right after it, and then uh, prices move down. It's a bearish setup. This is a uh, this is an inside inside bar, okay, right? Any other names for this pattern? Okay. Anybody have any other names? All right. Well, we can just stick with this, okay? Now, this looks like a very bearish pattern, all right? If you if you uh, if you took a look at it. Yeah, who said Harami? Does everybody know what a Harami is? Okay. Now, uh, just just focus on this here. So here you have a nice little reversal pattern, right? It's in all the textbooks. Okay. It's on a five-minute chart here. Now, what happens if I do this? Do we have that pattern there anymore? Pattern's gone, right? Okay. The the inside bar, yeah, it's definitely a bearish pattern. It would have been, uh, yeah, a little more bearish if uh, the red candle would have engulfed the green candle, but it's okay. All right, we'll look for other examples. But notice when I change the charts, uh, the okay, the the pattern goes away. All right. And if I change it to another time frame, um, well, that's a little bit too small. But uh, let me let me scroll back. Well, you're not even going to see it there on, on the one minute, right? On the ten minute there, the pattern goes away, right? If you want, if you go back to the five minute, the pattern's there, okay? So if uh, the book, th this is what the book is not going to tell you. Every page just shows you these perfect patterns. Uh, the one thing they don't tell you is as soon as you change the time frame, there's no pattern there anymore, okay? If you're so focused on doji candles, okay, uh, you can see prices are turning lower here, over to the right. Okay, we've got a doji candle up there, uh, pretty much a doji candle. The open's almost the same price as the close, right? You could probably consider that a doji candle. Okay, right, but uh, as soon as you change the time frame, there's no doji there anymore. Okay. Yet there are books written, strategies written about Doji candles. Okay, as soon as you change uh, the time frame, the the pattern's going to change. Okay. All right, so you have to be very careful with that. Uh, the 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 next thing you want to do is so that's point number one. Make sure you understand when, that when you change the time frame, uh, you're going to change the uh, the, the whole picture is going to change, all right? So be careful with that. The, the second thing is you need to look at these patterns and understand these patterns uh, more th much more much deeper than just, just being able to identify a pattern and knowing the definition. You have to understand uh, what is, what is uh, going on behind the scenes, okay? Uh, let's take a different market here. Uh, let's take a look at the dollar index. How about that? Okay. That up. Let's go to maybe a bigger time frame. All right. Oh, this is daily. So let's go to something a little bit smaller. Okay. 
so uh, down here at the bottom, uh, we pretty much have a bullish engulfing pattern, right? You've got this red candle right here. Uh, then the next candle here completely engulfs the red candle. Does everybody see that? But every, did everybody see I had to change the time frame to find that pattern? Again, the book's not going to tell you that. Right? So I'm, I'm trying to give you the real version here. I was going to set up uh, a ton of PowerPoint for this, but, you know, I don't know if it's, that would serve your purpose showing you just perfect setups all the time. Okay? Um, the reality is, uh, again, when you change the time frame, the pattern's going to be there or it's not going to be there. But when you do see the pattern, let's say you're on this time frame, you do see the pattern. All right? Uh, Again, there's two ways to look at this. Right? You have the red candle, and then the green candle completely engulfs the red candle. Right? Now, what's happening there? Understand that on the red candle, uh, you have people probably selling, right? I mean, for every seller buyer, there's a seller. But the sellers uh, kind of won the battle here on this red candle, right? Price dropped. Okay? You see that red candle. That leads to bearish expectations. Sellers are in the market. The reason why this pow uh, pattern is so powerful is because on the close of the next candle, right, that completely engulfs the prior red candle, okay, uh, on the close of this candle, you've now trapped everybody that sold or got short on this on this candle before it, okay, and trapped money is going to cause a big move in price. It always does, okay. Right? On the close of this very next candle, in other words, before you have that candle, let's uh, move this over a little bit, okay? When you have that picture right there, uh, that sets up for pretty bearish expectations. People think prices are maybe going to break out to the downside. A lot of people looking at this chart would get bearish, uh, but then all of a sudden, the next candle, now everybody's caught on the wrong side of the market, okay? Does everybody understand that? Everybody that got short, not only in that red candle before the green candle, but the uh, the five candles before that, everybody that got short is now a loser, right? Okay, get that? That is typically going to cause a strong move in price in the opposite direction, you know, to the upside. Okay, so the way we're talking about it now is how you want to talk about and understand all these candle patterns. Okay. All right. Any uh, any questions on that? Uh, someone's saying, what's your favorite time frame to trade off of? Um, whether you're a, an active trader or a longer term trader, you're, you're, uh, well, especially if you're an active trader, um, you can't ignore the larger time frames. So you're probably always going to want to, you know, take a quick look at a daily chart, uh, and then also be using your, you know, your five minute chart, maybe your uh, 15 minute chart. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's let's uh, look for some more candle patterns, and then we'll get into, and then we'll take all this a little bit deeper, all right? And okay, uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, there's just basically at this point, we're uh, June of 2008 here. There's basically a name for every possible candle on a that you could see on a chart. Uh, at this point, if you, if you search on the internet enough, you'll find a name for every single candle. Okay, and uh, this is a very difficult way to to make money. It's, it's just uh, you know going about it like that. Everybody, focus on this area here. See how prices are kind of just drifting around here, uh, and all of a sudden you shoot up from this area. Okay. Prices move up from this area because demand exceeds supply down in this region. If and when prices come back for the first time, again, notice red candle, red candle, red candle, red candle. And then all of a sudden you have almost 100% retracement here. Okay. Um, I'm not suggesting that you should just buy right at the supports, but uh, think of the candle pattern. You've got a big red bar after a drop in price. Novice sellers coming in. Trading on emotion. Okay. Okay. 
Again, big red bar after a series of red bars, that suggests novice traders coming into the market. Into a support level, then you get nearly 100% retracement of that candle, and then you're just basing sideways. You don't know that this exactly is going to happen, uh, but most of the time you're going to trade higher from this, this picture right here uh, into support. Okay. Understand, though, that the picture is going to be different. Right? Um, the picture is going to be different every time you, uh, you know, every time you change the uh, time frame there. Uh, notice this pattern up here. What, do, what would we call this? Spinning top. Okay. But do you see that? Um, but there are other spinning tops. Here's a spinning top. Okay. Uh, here's a spinning top. Okay, there's spinning tops all over the place. However, the spinning tops that come after a move up in price and into resistance, okay, does everybody understand that? Okay. All right. Let's take a look at a, a different market here. Uh, this will come up in just a second. Okay, here's a market that uh, looks like it's kind of stalling out. All right, I just scrunched the screen to see what it's coming into. Um, let me blow that up a, a little bit. When I put my uh, my cursor on the chart here. Okay. Does everybody see? Uh, Prices right now are kind of stalling out. You've had a number of red candles, uh, but look where they're stalling out at. Right, you've got a pivot low, but this is also the origin of this strong move up in price. Okay. Okay. So when we focus on on this area now and look at the candlestick pattern, uh, we see you're not dropping as strong as you were. Okay. You're now starting to get uh, maybe a little doji or spinning top in there. Okay. Uh, if we switch the time frame, okay, that might be a uh, note, notice here, right? We already know in the big picture we're down into to a support level, right? We already know in the big picture we've had we've had a significant drop in price already, okay? So now that we're down in that area, look what's happening. Every time you get a big red candle down, what happens? It comes right back. Big drop, comes right back. Does everybody see that? Again, it all comes down to look at that, this stuff for what's really happening. Understand what's happening behind the scenes with the order flow. We'll talk about that in a minute. And, and not just looking at these cat candles patterns, uh, you know, being very mechanical, like we have a doji, uh, time to buy, or buy this time to sell. That's not how it works. Okay. Here's the different time frames. Right here, we now pretty much have a Doji candle prior to the current candle, down into a support level. Okay. All right. These these uh, wicks here or tails are the footprints of the buyers. All right. Okay. Um. All right. Yeah, there are tons of candle patterns out there. Uh, there are there are so many out there now. Um, you'll you'll see some names that uh, uh, it's it's unbelievable. You know, uh, I mean, I'm sure people can most people know most of them, but uh, you can you can look at all that stuff and learn about all that stuff. Uh, those are going to be the the books that are marketed to you, or you can under or you can look at this stuff for what's really happening. Okay, understanding this is all just order flow and people trading. All right, that that's all it is. Uh, wh when I started out uh, trading, uh, or, or actually even understanding anything about these markets, again, was on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. What I witnessed every day was was people trading and uh, price, okay, order flow. I would come in in the morning, uh, handle orders, 
All right, take orders over the phone from institutions and uh, put those orders into the market if they were close to the market. All right. I started out in the currencies and, and, uh, and then worked some others. But uh, it was very simple because if you have, let's say, a thousand orders to buy in the uh, yen at a price level, but only 200 orders to sell, what's going to happen when the last sell order is filled? What's going to happen when the last uh, sell order is filled? And you have a, you have a thousand to buy and two hundred to sell at, at a specific price level. Okay, what's going to happen when you fill that last sell order? Price is going to go up. Can there be any, any other outcome? No, price has to go up, right? Okay, I I witnessed that and was a part of that uh, for a good year before I even knew what a chart existed. Okay, right, right, exactly. Price has to go up. Does the candle pattern matter matter down there? Okay, it could be it could be any candle pattern you want. It's not going to change the outcome. All right. Instead, uh, if, if you really want to focus on candle patterns, the, the key is knowing where the support and resistance is and knowing what the trend is. And if you should get happen to get one of these reversal patterns, such as a Harami or an engulfing pattern or a doji candle at an area of support or resistance, um, you know, go ahead and go ahead and take the trade. Okay. This question here, uh, can a candlestick pattern indicate to which direction the market is going after the data is released from an economic calendar? Um, you know, they could certainly do that, but you're going to want to know your, your support resistance levels uh, uh, first, okay? You're not going to want to focus on the candle patterns too much when that, when that number's out, okay? Yeah, okay? What you want to focus on, here's the key. The, the key, the key to, to analyzing any chart is focusing on the price levels, focusing uh, on the areas on a chart where price was not able to go, understanding why price was not able to go there. Okay, the answer is always going to be it's because of a major imbalance uh, of, of buyers or sellers. Okay, if you have a price level where the, where the chart level tells you that you have many more willing sellers than buyers, okay, you want to sell to someone who wants to buy there. Okay. The candlestick pattern at the time of the, that entry is always going to be a little bit different, and it's going to change every time you, uh, you, you change the time frame. Okay, look up here at this chart. Let's say we're re revisiting this prior high. All right. Uh, here's what it looks like in an hourly chart. You've got some wicks. Um, we can let's blow this up here. If we go back, this double top. Okay, that's what it looks like if you go to a ten minute chart. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the ch the reason why the chart uh, is, is so great is because it's sh all it's all it's showing you is people that have uh, basically placed their bet in the market, right? Okay. All right, but I can tell you from experience, the people that you see that are are just experts in the in the specific candle patterns, right, and focus solely on that. I I can't sit here and honestly say I've ever seen anyone make money just doing that. Okay, does everybody everybody understand that? Um, I'm just here to help help you trade. I don't. Uh, I have nothing to uh, sell you or anything, so I'm going to give it to you straight. Um, okay. Yeah, the candles. Uh, the candles are the footprints of the buyers and the sellers. Okay. Um, they help us determine where turning points are going to be. Right. Let's let's look at uh, another market here. Uh, the euro yen. We're not getting not getting too much movement here, but but that's okay. Let's put a little line in here. This is one we were looking at uh, 
earlier today. Oops. Okay. For focusing on this area here, prices drop. Uh, we revisit that area. Okay. Prices um, drop again. But but notice the strong drop in price. Okay. Uh, someone said in here, uh, you know, they offer probabilities. That's exactly what we offer. They offer. Okay. People will say trading's like gambling. Uh, well, you know what? It is. But it happens to be the kind of gambling where you can absolutely stack the odds in your favor if you want to. Okay. Uh, if you want to compare uh, trading to to gambling, it's like playing uh, 21 blackjack where uh, in Las Vegas where. But 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 imagine this. Imagine you can. You could sit there and put your money on the table after you see what the cards are. And you could put as much money as you want down. Does everybody understand that? Okay, that, that's what trading is. Unfortunately, uh, most people, well, as an educator, you would say, uh, unfortunately, most people do it the wrong way. As a trader, you would say, thank God, most people do it the wrong way. Everybody understand that? Okay. But look at this area here. You see how prices came up uh, and quickly traded down very quickly? Uh, this tells us there's a big uh, imbalance of buyers and sellers right here. So we'd want to focus in right on this area as a short-term trader. Okay. We lay lay uh, another line right in there. I will set this as a default so we don't have to do that again. Okay. This this area right in here. Prices went there and we see that at this point they are not able to go higher. Not only that, but they can only stay there for a very, very short period of time. Okay. All right. Uh, and prices drop. This gives us a lot of. Uh, this has given us a big message. Prices stay here for a very short period of time and scream away from that level. Okay. Uh, if and when someone buys after this big move up in price and right into a price level where uh, supply exceeds demand, we want to sell to this buyer here. Why? Because they're buying. When they're buying here, the odds are stacked against them. In other words, the odds are stacked in our favor. Is a trade going to work out for sure? No. But that's why we want to be so anticipatory in our analysis. We want to predict with a high degree of, of accuracy uh, turning points. Okay? All right. Okay. And you want to sell to this buyer because, again, the, the odds are stacked against them. Okay? All right. Oh, that's a good question here. Uh, Someone's asking, uh, how do we know as traders when there are 1,000 sell orders and 200 buy orders at a given price? Okay. While you will not know those exact numbers, uh, the beauty is you don't need to. Okay. All right. Let's take this. Let's take this area down here. Uh, we could switch the time frame so we see maybe a different, get a different look at it. Um, doesn't matter to me. You could pick the time frame if you want to. Let's let's keep it at this. Let's focus on this area here. We don't know exactly uh, how many willing buyers are there. You know, maybe it's a million, maybe it's a hundred million. Who knows? Uh, well, I shouldn't say who knows, but but the point is, we don't need to know those exact, exact numbers. Why? Because the chart is going to tell us that. Okay. Market depth. Everyone talks about market depth and volume. You don't need any of those things. Okay. Um, I've I've been I've been trading with with very good results for. A long time, um, and uh, you don't. You know, everybody complains. Everybody complains about no volume in forex. You don't need it. Uh, I, I don't even know what what volume would do to, to help your trading. If anything, it's going to hurt your trading. Okay. Let me walk you through this, so so maybe you can understand. Again, notice how sh how short of a period of time prices stay here, right? Okay. They come down to this price level, whatever it is. Okay. And then they take off like a rocket, right? It's not just a gradual rally. This this is a strong move up. Okay. Why does that happen? Okay. Given the fact that now focus on these two things. Focus on these two things. Uh, first of all, prices can only stay here for a short period of time. Now I have this on a 30-minute chart, and they're not prices don't stay here very long. Does that suggest a strong supply and demand imbalance or a small supply and demand imbalance? Which one? Strong, right? Nice job there. Okay. 
right? Prices are only stable, able to stay there for a short period of time. It's because there's such a strong imbalance of buyers and sellers. Point number two, now follow along. Prices move up so strong from that level. Given the fact that you have such a strong rally, as opposed to a, a gradual rally, uh, does this picture here tell us, the strong rally tell us that there's a strong imbalance, a big imbalance of buyers to sellers? or a small imbalance of buyers to sellers down there at this area? What does a strong move away tell us? Big imbalance or small imbalance? Uh, 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 big imbalance, right? So the fact that they were only able to stay there, stay there for a short period of time, that the fact that this rally was so strong from that level tells you there's a, huge, there's a ton of buyers and zero sellers, okay? When price was there, there were a, a zillion buyers and, and uh, obviously very few sellers. Okay? So let me ask you this. Do you need volume? Did you need volume there? Okay. No. There's nothing volume's going to do for you. And let me take it one step further. Okay? When, uh, given the fact that the imbalance of buyers to sellers is so big, if we were able to see volume here, what do you think it would be? You think it'd be big volume or small volume? Okay. By saying big volume. Okay. Now, did anybody say small volume? All right. I'm glad I asked the question. Okay. It's not. It, it's 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 uh, a picture like that is almost always going to have small volume. Okay. And why is that? It's because at price levels where the where the supply and demand is so out of balance, it's a great level, but very few people get to trade. Right? Does everybody understand that? So your volume is going to be small. Most people look for high volume areas on a chart. Okay. Um, does everybody understand that? The fact that price only trades there for a short period of time and screams out of that level suggests a, a, a big imbalance of buyers to sellers. Uh, when, when the imbalance is so great, and again, I saw this every day. I was a part of it on a trading floor uh, by, by being on a desk, uh, uh, an order flow desk. Uh, very few trades take place. Now, you have the most potential volume down at that level. But again, very few people get to uh, actually buy and sell there because of the big imbalance. Okay. Now let me, uh, and all these questions, uh, I planned it this way. I actually was uh, driving in this morning and, and thinking, uh, how could we do this? It's a little bit different. Uh, you know, kind of always talking about the same stuff and doing it the same way. But uh, I wanted to be a lot more interactive today to and for your benefit. Okay. Now let me run through, uh, run you through a few more, few more series of uh, another series of questions here. Uh, along these same lines. Very, very, very important here because what I'm going to tell you, uh, most people, in my opinion, at least the people I come in touch with, what I'm about to talk about, see this exact, exactly backwards. Okay, uh, and most books will will write about this completely backwards. So don't take my word for it. Let me ask you, and just use your simple logic to come to the conclusions. In any market, let's let's go back to pure supply and demand 101. In any market. Right? You you well you have uh, you have equilibrium, and then if you move up, you're into levels where uh, supply is strong, you know, really big, right? Strong supply, and below equilibrium we have demand. Okay, so three points, right? Three areas. In any market, where does price spend most of its time? At demand, supply, or equilibrium? Which one? Exactly, equilibrium. Okay. So, in any market, where uh, are you going to see the, the highest number of candles? Supply, demand, or equilibrium? Where are you going to see the giant clusters of candles? Supply, demand, or equilibrium? Exactly, equilibrium. So now let me ask you this. In any market, right? where is the highest amount of volume going to be? 
supply, demand, or equilibrium? Exactly, equilibrium. Here's the most important question I'm going to ask you. Is there trading opportunity at equilibrium? No. And that's where everybody gets it wrong because we're, we're, we're humans, we, we're, we're visual, okay? There's no trading op opportunity at equilibrium, very little. You can buy and sell as much as you want at equilibrium, okay? Everybody focuses on the, the price levels with the, with, the, with the zillion candles and where all the volume is. Uh, let them, okay? That, that's, not where, uh, that's not where your trading opportunity is. The further you get away from equilibrium, the greater the supply and demand imbalance. But when you get out to those levels where the trading opportunities are great, where your profit margins are enormous, okay, uh, you get, you know, the further out you get, you get fewer candles and less volume. Fewer people get to buy and sell. That's what you need to be looking for on these charts. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, was that, is that helpful? Did everybody understand that? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, if you have any, any uh, just general questions, throw them out there, um, and we can, we can deal with them now. Um, okay. The way that we're talking about it now is very different than just saying, here's a doji candle short, here's a spinning top, you know, buy or, or sell, right? How far back do you look for levels? Uh, you're typically going to look for, uh, as far as you have to. Um, for the active trader, it's usually going to be no more than a day or two. Okay. Favorite candlestick patterns? That's a great, great question. Uh, there are some fantastic patterns. Okay. Your Haramis, far from equilibrium. Let, let's say you get, uh, uh, let's say you have a bunch of sideways candles, and then all of a sudden a Harami shows up. Forget it. But let's say you have a uh, a, a a few green candles in a row and price is really moving up. Let's say in this chart we're looking at right now, we get up to about 167.5 and all of a sudden you get a Harami come in. It's a great pattern, okay? Um, right? Some of the best patterns out there are those island tops and bottoms. But think about why they're powerful patterns. You want to see the, that, the, the, can, the candlestick patterns that represent trapped money at support levels and at resistance levels are, are, are very rarely not going to work. Why do people have so much trouble with them? Well, first of all, it's the time frame issue. Second of all, they're not quantifying support and resistance the right way. Okay. Uh, looking at how, how uh, looking at the structure of price as it revisits a level. Um, Let's say price comes down into this support level we've drawn here on the Euro Yen in the 30 minute chart here on the bottom. When price comes down there, there is nothing wrong with going down. This is a 30 minute chart. Go down to a five minute chart. You know where the, price, you know where the level is. Go down to a five minute chart and watch the, watch the price action. As soon as you get a bullish engulfing pattern there, right? As soon as you get a, a, a bottoming wick, okay? Things like that, uh, okay? Um, you know, it's probably time to, to consider a low-risk uh, long entry. Okay. Do you find futures easier than spot? Um, they're just a little different. You know, uh, you can send me an email on that. I, I, I can uh, probably better respond to this that question uh, in email, but uh, they're they're different a little bit. Okay. I, I traded uh, currency futures for years before I traded anything else. Okay. Uh, the order flow we're going to uh, here we're going to talk about in the next section actually uh, kind of a pretty deep topic and then what we do is we'll go into the candles and, and see that order flow okay uh, but that we'll start with that in about uh, ten minutes okay is trading easier in the pits or electronic well it's funny because you, you would think that if you have the order flow right in front of you uh, you know if you do have the order flow in front of you uh, you pretty much know where prices are, are going and, and when they're going to turn right. Um, if price uh, is, is trading here at say 167, and you, you're sitting on a, you're on a, a trading desk, and you've got uh, a zillion orders to sell at 167, you know, two, uh, you know, where's resistance? Well, it's going to be 167.2. That's where you'd want to sell. Uh, 
But once, you, once you're able to see that order flow, you know, what, that order flow and, and exactly what it looks like on a price chart, um, I would argue that electronic trading is, is, is uh, uh, you know, uh, fantastic, you know, better than, than uh, pit trading, okay? Because in the pit, you don't, you're, most people are not looking at a chart, right? What's a Harami? It's a candlestick pattern. Uh, uh, if you just, uh, if you just uh, search uh, the word Harami, and it's actually not, that's not how it's spelled, just make that O and A. Uh, you'll 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 see plenty of uh, examples of it. Okay. Great question here. Does a does a hanging man always determine a downtrend? Absolutely not. Okay. A hanging man after a move up in price and into resistance in the context of a downtrend, that's a high probability shorting opportunity. Okay. But notice I'm not just using the word hanging man. It's got to be in the right place. And it's got to show me that a novice buyer is buying after a move up in price into resistance, which is a price level where there's more sellers than buyers, and in the context of a downtrend. I want to make sure that the person I'm trading against is making a very, very big mistake. So don't take every hanging man that you see. Take the hanging man that re represents the novice trader is coming into uh, the market. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Right. It's hard to get all that out in just a little 45-minute uh, or hour session, but uh, do my best. And again, we're going to be back back here for another hour. Okay. Equilibrium for uh, for any market, including the spot market, is something uh, we definitely cover in a, in a different section. It's uh, there, there, there's not uh, a a 30 second answer that uh, that I think we'll we'll do uh, very very precise how we do it, but it really really is is so important. Uh, you, you could send me an email on that too. I'll I, uh, um, for those if, if you send an email, I wasn't able to get back to it in the last week. Uh, next week I uh, is a very free week for me. Uh, I'll definitely be able to get back to emails uh, in a timely fashion. Okay. Uh, another question about. Uh, uh, about what I do, uh, asking if I just use uh, candlesticks um, or other technical indicators. Okay, I um, I just use candlesticks. Okay, uh, but there's nothing wrong with using some indicators. Again, as long as you use them to represent the things that we're talking about here, identifying the novice trader. Okay. Uh, Tony's got a good question there. Do you prefer to wait for candlestick formations, or do you enter as soon as price returns to the level, support or resistance level? Um, you, when price gets to the level, you definitely want some confirmation. In other words, go down uh, a time frame and look at the candle, look at look at the price action. Watch the candlestick formations there. If you're down into support uh, and you get a big red candle on a on a tiny time frame, and all of a sudden you get a green candle that engulfs that red candle, that's a buy signal, right? Okay. Maybe you get a bottoming tail down there. Maybe you get a doji candle down there. All those things are, it, the, the key is where these things are happening. Okay. Yeah, I only use candles. I don't use anything else. But that's just me. You don't want, you, you don't want to do what I do. Uh, what I do is kind of boring. But uh, there's lots of ways to do this. If not in the pits, how do you, how do you know that, uh, that the novices are buying? Um, that's that's the main thing uh, we talked about today, and that's an, the main thing we're going to start with in in a few minutes. Uh, again, uh, all right. That the key is when you go to make a trade. If I can leave you with one thing that's so important, ask yourself this simple question before you're ready to push the button. Ask yourself who is on the other side of your trade, right? And run that run that person you're trading against through a filter through through the object through a filter uh, of supply and demand are they making a decision uh, maybe you're selling so you're selling to a buyer is that buyer buying uh, you know are they making a smart decision based on the laws of supply and demand or not okay
Candlestick patterns on a one minute chart are, are great. But again, you have to know where prices add in the big picture. Don't just do anything off that one minute chart. Okay. I don't use standard deviation, but it's uh you know that that's something that uh, works real well. Okay, if you use it properly. It's not that larger time frame candles are better. It's that if you're going to be a short-term trader, uh, boy, let, let's just say, uh, I think it'll be there in the next session too, but let, let's just say uh, you've got uh, a nice little buy set up on a five-minute chart. Well, what if, what if, uh, what if uh, in, the, in the larger time frame, maybe in the daily chart, that, that little five-minute buy setup is happening right into larger time frame resistance? See what I'm saying? Just make sure you're not buying right into bigger time frame resistance. Make sure you're not shorting right into bigger time frame support. Okay. Okay, that 300 period versus 200 period, you know, there's 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 nothing better about one or the other. You know, uh, you'll see people saying, "Well, I trade off a 644 tick chart or uh, things like that." Okay, um, you know, you don't want to be too specific on your time frames. If you're going to be a short-term trader, use use two or three. I would say two short-term charts, maybe a two and a five-minute chart. And then throw a daily on there so you know we're at in the big picture and keep it that simple. Okay. All right, we're going to have to wrap up here, uh, but we'll see some of you back in just a few minutes. Okay.